Hello everyone. I know we just made a video just like this one earlier in the year, I think. But the truth is, we were away from the collection again. And this time for three months, exactly. We didn't mean to, but you know, life gets in the way. And we ended up staying pretty much the whole summer away. And even though we made a video pretty similar to this one earlier in the year, I thought it would still be interesting to show you how the collection is after three months. First of all, because this time it was in the summer, so I was expecting to find a lot more things in worse condition. But also because I realized that a lot of the videos I'm going to be making in the next few months are going to involve in some shape or form, recovering the collection from the aggression of these past three months. So I might as well tell you how they're doing now, and then we can see how they recover. I can tell you right now that for the past three months, they were watered maybe once a week, once every two weeks. Nothing else was done, no fertilization, and they were, of course, subjected to the immense heat we always have here in the summer. So. Like I just said, I was expecting to find them in much worse shape. But of course, I can already see some dried up leaves and I think a few casualties. So we're going to go through it as quickly as I can and I'll take you along for the journey. If you would like to support our channel, don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to support it further, we now have a super thanks option where you can tip us whatever amount you want. So let's look at how the collection is doing. Here we have all the mounts and some of the smaller plants. As you can see, the sphagnum moth that I left here is completely dried already. So what I'm going to do, considering we just got in last night and we're still pretty tired, is I'm not going to tidy anything up right now. I'm just going to give the plants that I think need it a little bit of water and deal with tidying up tomorrow. I would film tidying up the entire collection, but I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of it because if everything goes well, we will be moving somewhat soon. And I really don't feel like cleaning all the shells, cleaning all the leaves, putting everything like very presentable if I'm going to have to pack up all these plants in like a couple of months. So if we take a closer look at how the mounts are, I'm surprised because they could be doing a lot worse. This brassavola was forming a flower spike right before we left. And now that flower spike seems to be huge, but it looks more like another leaf. So maybe it was never a flower spike to begin with, or some sort of cakey. Well, I thought I was going to miss the flowering and apparently there is nothing to miss because this, I think, yeah, it looks pretty much like their other leaves. But it's coming from the base of this leaf. Whatever it is, I don't think it's connected to having been underwatered. So, another orchid mystery for us to solve. The other mounts. We have, oh. I think this leaf rotted. It must have stayed too close to the sphagnum. So we have here a few leaves that aren't doing well, and I've been debating taking the two Leptotas that I have and potting them because I'm not sure how I'm going to arrange the mounts in the new house when we move. So in my head, the less mounts I have, the less I have to worry about it. And looking at this, I'm going to have to see if I need to unmount this and remove any rot. Oh yeah. Look, this leaf is com completely rotted. This is going to be a plant that's going to need immediate intervention. Make sure I don't lose it all. The other Leptotus also has some dead growths. But these seem to be mostly dry to me. 
I don't think they rot it. But maybe I would repot this one just to be safe. No idea how I would put this in a pot. So maybe it would be smarter of me to keep it mounted. I really like the look of this plant when it's mounted, but like I said, now would be the time if I was ever going to transition it into a pot. So this is another one that has to go to the take care immediately pile. I also placed here some of the miniatures that I was afraid would get lost in the shuffle in the, in the shelves. And this is our Bulbophyllum Tyronensis. It needs a little bit of water. And it has a couple of dried leaves. But other than that, I think it's doing great. Our Dendrobium Uncatum, as you can see, seems to have dried off most of its growths. We have a few new ones here. But I, I'm not sure if this plant is going to make it gonna try my best. Don't know if I try to cut off the growths that aren't doing well or if I just leave everything as is and hope for the best. But either way this is not good. This Lockhartia seems to be doing good. We even have some new growths. So is this bulb of film here. The big dendrobium unfortunately got most of its growing season kind of screwed up. It made a lot of keikis, it grew its new growths, but as you can see over here, some of it is dehydrated and a bit mangled. So I think I'm gonna soak this one separately. Make sure it gets some good hydration and see if these leaves unfurl. The Paraphalanopsis. That seems completely unbothered. I think it might even have grown a new leaf. Or at least grown it a lot longer. So, that's good news. So here we have the table where I left all of the Oncidiums. And I can already see some casualties. This one here was a Bolara no ID, and I think it's <laughs> I think it's dead. This bulb here is still a little stiff, but everything else is completely mushy. So I this one's going straight in the trash bin. This one is really heartbreaking. This was the Miltonia that Matthias sent us a few years ago. And it did great. It never flowered, but it was growing perfectly fine. And now that we're gone, it just completely melted away. I really hate that we killed this one. I hate it every time that someone gifts me something and I can't keep it alive. Now, if we take a look at the rest of the Ancidiums one by one, we can tell that a lot of them aren't doing great, and I'm not sure if they're going to survive. This one still has some growing and some green, but something didn't go well. It could be that it just dried up from dehydration, or maybe it's sick. The twinkles here have a lot of dried up leaves. Oh, and a part of the plant, I think, died off. So I probably should repot this, remove all the dead parts, and hope for the best. More dried up leaves here. Same thing with this one. This one may have actually rotted because the problem with giving someone the instructions of just put a little bit of water in each pot is that if the plant doesn't drink everything in between waterings, it ends up kind of soaking for too long. And even though it's summer, I think this one ended up rotting a little bit. This is another twinkle. And I think I had just repotted this one. Either way, I'm going to have to do it again. 
Okay, it might be the Miltonias, because my other Miltonia, as you can see, is also doing terrible. We have some growths here that I might be able to salvage. It even bloomed while we were away, the poor thing. But a lot of the plant has died off. And again, another one that's going to require intervention. I was expecting the zygopetalums to have fared worse. And granted, I haven't found them here in the midst of all this, but I don't see any more dead plants. And weirdly enough, the Miltoniopsis still doing as good as it was. We have some dried up leaves, but we also did last summer while I was here staring at it, so that can't be the problem. As you can see, most of the Oncidiums have those yellow, dried off, I think dried off, not rotted. Who knows? They're a bit soft, but it could be just because it's dead. So if I don't want to lose most of my Oncidiums, I think I might as well repot them all, if not all, most of them. It's also going to come in handy because my plan for the new house was to put them all in self-watering so I could put them in really high shelves and not have to take care of them for a little bit because I'm going to have a lot more limited space so I'm betting on higher shelves and I need plants that won't need a lot of maintenance. And since the Oncidiums are this ugly unruly mess I think they're perfect candidates for the top shelf. And with the self-watering if they end up being a little bit more moist than the other orchids it's usually fine with Oncidiums. I think that would be a good plan. And since I'm going to have to intervene with a lot of these plants, I might as well get myself some self-watering pots and get it started now. Like I did last time, I placed all the big phalaenopsis on the floor, because even though my shelves aren't that high, they're still high for the lady who was coming over to give them some water, so I thought it would be easier to just put them on the floor for her. And at first glance, I think they're all doing fine. Don't even see any yellowing leaves. So I think they pretty much did great while we were away. I am going to have to do something to them though, because I can see some of them are dry and need watering. And others, there seems to have accumulated water in the, the decorative container. So they might be too soaked and I need to drain those pots as soon as possible. Looking at the Paphiopedalum shelf, everyone seems to be doing pretty great, except for <laughs> my poor Phragmopedium that, being a very finicky plant, somehow survived being left alone twice this year. But it survived it, it's definitely not thriving. Oh, as you can see, this growth here that I just repotted still doesn't have any roots. And honestly, I can't blame it. If we look at these plants here, they're very dry. So these definitely are going to need a little bit of water today. Oh. Oh, the Pathpendium flowered. But because I went against the other pod, it's kind of deformed. On this shelf we have our catacetums and our maxillarias and other species like that. And the catacetums are doing great. We unfortunately missed the flowering on this one. I think it's the second year that it flowers and I've missed it. Archaeus seems to be developing really good new growths, but I think the old ones got very shrivelly. So I think it probably needed more water. And the problem is that this pot kind of doesn't reach the bottom of the deco pot. So even if some water was left, it would just stay here. The pot is here, so it never got to really soak. And it's been living these past three months of just what runs through the pot. So considering that, I think it's doing okay. On the maxillaria front, we have a lot of dehydration and dried up leaves, but I don't think anything to worry much about for these plants. 
of course, my favorite, the Shunkiana, also has some dried up growths. And I'm left pretty much like with the Oncidiums. Is it rot? Is it dried up? They're soft, but... Nope, definitely rot, because this one just exploded in my hand. So, yeah, another one that's going to need to be repotted, cut up, see if we can salvage anything out of this plant. This Vandanana, which is one of my most finicky Vandas, seems to have held on with just one dried up leaf, so that's a surprise. Over here, we have the rest of the Vandas that all pretty much seem to be doing really well, except our Demophorcus that seems to have dried off like the center leaf. I don't think there's anything I can do about that other than wait and see how the plant reacts. This one also seems a bit droopy, but not dehydrated, so I think it's just it's growing bigger and the weight of it is making it droop. But other than that, all is well with the Vandas. Even the big Vanda type that we usually have hanging on the, on the window seems to have fared really well. Well, in fact, it has one, two, three, four, five flower spikes, I think. What we did with her was, instead of having it hang on the window, we placed it in the bucket where we usually water it. And the lady who came treated it like she treats all the other orchids. She puts a little bit of water, leaves it in the pot, and during the week the plant has something to drink. That method seems to have worked out well, weirdly enough, in the winter, where I was afraid to use it, but now in the summer there seems to be more water in the deco pots than I was expecting. And I don't know if that's not why some of the plants seem to be a bit... seems to be suffering from a little bit of rot issues. Which is weird, because in the summer the pots should dry faster. Maybe she put more water in them than the last time, I don't know. If we start looking here at our Phalaenopsis species in primary hybrids, None of them look great, but I'm pretty sure they're okay. I see no like extreme signs of dehydration or rot, no dead leaves. Okay, this one doesn't look great, but I'm pretty sure this was one of the plants that was already showing signs of being sick before I left. So I'm gonna have to put it together with the other ones. I also have to check up on those, by the way. The ones that I keep in the hallway and see how many survivors we have. In case you're new to the channel, the hallway is like the punishment place where the sick plants go to either die or survive. At least it has been in the last few months where we haven't had much time to deal with our plants. But yeah, over here, first glance everyone is doing decently. And on this shelf as well. This plant doesn't look good, but she came already with these almost variegated stripes to her leaves and has been pretty healthy for the past two years, even though she has these markings that don't seem to be like viral or anything. So maybe I have a really rare variegated speciosa, who knows. Our terminal spike, Gornucervi, still doing great. No signs of a cakey yet. Down here, we have some more Phalaenopsis species in primary hybrids, all doing decent too. And I can see that one of my favorite orchids, if not my favorite orchid, is flowering. Oh, so that's what I was smelling when I got in here. Hopefully she can keep flowering and I can film her better. Over here, this Phalaenopsis is also in bloom. She wasn't when we left, but this plant has a tendency to bloom for months and months and months. So I think we might still enjoy it for a while. This one has some dried up leaves, which seems to be the worst of it. But yeah, this is uh, my Equestris crossed with Finley, and it seems to be a bit of a more sensitive plant, so I'm glad it's still 
alive. And we seem to have missed the flowering and our equestress too, which is a shame. And it has some dried up leaves. So maybe it's the equestress that isn't very great with resisting my, my bad care. Over here we have my mini Phalaenopsis, and my complex hybrid mini Phalaenopsis, and another casualty. This one definitely dead. And weirdly enough, it doesn't have its tag, so I don't even know which one it is. I'll probably have to look at the files to figure out. Oh, oh. that's something else to deal with. Oh, they're completely stuck to the wall. Oh no. I don't think they're coming off. Well, they are, just without breaking them. Now we're off to the mini Catlia shelf on the other side of the room. And everyone seems to be okay. Over here, clearly was going to flower and the bud blasted. My Epidendrum Porpax plants are surprisingly resisting, considering last year they were fading away while I was here, trying to keep them watered furiously. This one. The older growths seem to have faded away, but it still has three, so maybe we won't lose it just yet. That's still a very, very young seedling, so this probably just set it back like a couple of years. Over here on my miscellaneous species and miniatures shelf, again, everyone seems to be okay, except for this poor gastrochylus that's completely gone. It wasn't the healthiest plant when I left, to be honest. And I kind of thought it was just withering away even before I left. So I wasn't expecting to find this one alive, to be honest. I think this Gomesa here flowered while we were away. Yeah, I think these are little dried up flowers. That plant has such tiny flowers that Sometimes even when they're fresh, you can't see them either way. My two big bulbophyllum pots are again, a bit dehydrated from being left, but otherwise okay. Even though the bulbophyllums can be very finicky when you get them to these big specimens, I think it would be very, very difficult to kind of throw one of these down. But you know, it's not like a challenge or anything. Please stay healthy. Now, this is the Dendrobium and Angrecum shelf, and I don't think we have any casualties here. This Dendrobium actually seems to be doing better than ever. We got this one like a year ago at the Lisbon show. This one, the older parts of the plant seem to have died, and this whole section here, which I think it's separated from the rest of the plant. But this is one of those species that I was kind of afraid to take on because I have no idea exactly how to take care of it. And to still see some green and still see it doing okay is encouraging. We seem to have some dried up leaves on this one. But a new flower spike on that one. This plant looks miserable, but again, it's one of those that already looked kind of miserable before we left. So I didn't expect it to make a miraculous recovery while we were gone. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up losing this plant and I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. Oh, right now it, it is very dried up, so that, that can't have helped. But if you have any tips on how to better take care of it, if it survives, please let me know. Over here on the top shelves on this side, we have like a mishmash of plants that didn't fit anywhere else. And of course, over there are bigger cattleyas. But here, we unfortunately have our Dendrobium lamellatum, which is a plant I love and it always flowers a lot for us. So you can see it flowered while we were away. But the new growths always grow kind of deformed, like they don't have enough moisture. And I have her in pretty much almost just sphagnum. So I wish I could tell you that this 
twisted thing is because of neglect. But ever since I've got this plant a year and a half ago, it keeps growing new growth like this. So I think one thing I have to do is to put it in just sphagnum, just to see what it does, just to see if that's going to be enough hydration for it. In the new place where we're moving, we're also going to have higher natural humidity, you know, without humidifiers. So that might also help. This Phalaenopsis here, that granted really needed a repot before we went, seems to have these weird markings here on the leaf. Probably from dehydration because it goes all the way down in like the center of the leaf. But since I got thrips two years ago now, I always get a bit panicky when I see markings on leaves. So I think after watering and tidying them all a little bit in their place, the next stage is also going to be spray them all with insecticide. Don't know if they've all been this year. I don't think they have. I think I've only sprayed the catacetums and the chysis because those are the ones that usually suffer the most with pests. But I think a, a prophylactic spraying with the insecticide that we like best is warranted at this point. This because as, as much as the orchids look okay, the houseplants didn't fare as well. And one of the things I have is also markings on the leaves of my Hoyas, or at least one of them. I have to go check them out more thoroughly. So yeah, we might have some bug going around. And before I see more damage, I'd rather spray them. This Sologeny seems to be doing better than ever. It grew a lot while we were away. Even though it desperately needs a repot and it needs some bigger bowl type of setup for it. It's doing great, it's gonna flower. This is another plant that was finicky for a while and as soon as it got to this like specimen size, you can do all sorts of evil things to it and it's just it just bounces back. My big Gigantia hybrid seems to be doing well, but I don't like the way this leaf is drooping and almost like breaking here at the center. But maybe it's just part of the natural process. The plant was potted up like this and now that it's getting heavier it's going to start drooping to the front like Phalaenopsis naturally do. My Psychopsis seems to have decided that while we were away and she was a little bit dehydrated it was the best time to have two flower spikes going at the same time. And she was reported somewhat recently, so this is another one that kind of stalled and stalled and stalled. And as soon as it got going, no one can stop her. Starting with the Cattleyas, we seem to have missed the flowering of both our Encyclia Marii and this one here. And it was the first flowering, at least for us, that this plant had, so that's a pity. The Cochleata hybrids are a bit dehydrated, but they seem to be doing well. The rest of the Cattleyas seem to have taken less water and a lot of heat as a great excuse to make more flowers. So we have here this hybrid that we love but don't have an ID for. And our Maikai Louise, both in wonderful bloom. Other than that, I think everyone is healthy and doing okay. A few dried up leaves here and there, of course, but nothing much. So, that was part one of recovering our orchid collection. Part two is going to be right after I finish filming this video, watering them, maybe with a bit of fertilizer, draining the ones that need draining, putting them each in their place in the shelves, and waiting a few days just to see how things evolve. I, I won't be filming any of that because honestly I do not have the, the, the energy or the time right now but I think I will be filming everything else that we have to do to try and make them bounce back. The repots, the cutting back rotten bulbs, I'm gonna try my best to try and keep you updated on that so maybe we can all learn how workers recover from someone being really really neglectful. Hopefully you'll never need that, but uh, I guess if I say that this is for educational purposes, I can feel a little bit better about it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope we can return to posting regularly now. 
Either way, if you want to keep following our orchid journey, don't forget to subscribe and leave it a like. We'll see you next week with another video. Goodbye.